This is one of the most heavily anticipated match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, points are still on the board for anyone. So just the Dream Witch is off the board. Uh, I'm guessing Yanasa is the sculptor of the team. So Vampy can go for... We've seen Bon Bon run amok in, in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Especially, um, it can definitely counter a lot of the... Like, chip down. It can counter the Seer a lot, especially with um, chip damage. And the, the most peskiest target is that Priestess and... We are going to see another sculptor, courtesy of Bambi. So it seems like the team of AL have sculptors up their pockets. Looks like that is indeed the case, Poch. So sculptor, once again, will be making an appearance courtesy of Bambi. This is going to be um, quite the sight to behold. Like you said, ties right now. And with these two teams, itself for them to be able to be consistent and here we go vampy over at the statue area um seeing mkk here uh, the seer actually would be a great target for this sculptor because again she can definitely bait out that owl with all these uh, statue hits and it seems like vampy is going to be locked and loaded for this seer yeah now just waiting for that whether or not we'll be seeing the full commit not necessarily a most ideal target but not a bad way to go either. If ever right. time, it really comes down to timing when it comes to this particular chase, and that's an early owl. By the way. Yeah, again, baiting out that owl just so that the seer would be a blank slate when that owl get hit, he gets hit, he gets a bolt debuff. So I believe this is actually a pretty formidable target because again, that priestess in oh my gosh, setting up these portals is gonna be a very tricky target. And comparing it to the the brawny uh, football, uh, the brawny forward as well as the wilding, could definitely harass. So Vampy is locked and loaded with the MKK. But look at all these portals being utilized for him to gain this uh, this distance. Mm -hmm. And there you go, Vampy. Oh. Falls down. Mm -hmm. But the chase is still on, Artiguno. Mm -hmm. That is definitely a huge breather for the Seer here. Just gets a lot of time. Bit of an unfortunate uh, mishap right there. But you know what? This sculptor is back on the hunt. And not to mention closing out a lot of distance. MKK having wow. to dodge and duck and weave and makes up for lost ground by getting that down on the Seer. You see the timing on that sculptures and the, the, the regular hit? Amazing stuff from Vampy. Again, that was quite the unfortunate spot and really great stuff for MKK being able to let Vampy fall down to the basement. But now it seems like um, they have to respond to this shared seer. Uh, the sculpt, uh, the, the chisel will be used over at the um, the shack area and uh, Cezai will definitely have to respect that. I guess we'll have to see as well whether or not Will we be actually finding the commit of a rescue? Because in all fairness, Cypher progress is pretty decent for GR suit. So I believe they can afford to commit some level of time to rescue that seer. And, you know, just to buy them a lot more time by having those full four bolster numbers straight on the field. Yeah, and you see that uh, the Wildling does have wanted order. And he is always at the vicinity just to either bait a save or just keep the hunter at bay just so the hunter would not disrupt any cypher rush. But from this sculptor, you see that the chisel just does so much work and it has so much surveillance around the area. Here we see the entrance of hospital. Cizai over there just ducking and weaving. You see that the, the wildling trying to find the opening, but Vampy does a great job in multitasking to see if like going for surveillance or going to go camping. So now we see that the forward is over at hospital. Um, three survivors remaining. Yes, so that's going to be a bit of a breather here for Van P. But at the same time, GR, like I said, significant progress on the three survivors that haven't been popped yet. But there is still going to be that struggle of that fifth one. Okay, we see a fifth one come to life, slowly being worked on. Not to mention the good thing about this is, okay, on the flip side, they only have one pop. But with three at a very good position for priming, it gives them a lot of options. And this will force Vanpi in a position where Vanpi is not gonna have the easiest time anticipating which area um, this particular hunter should be focusing on for these 
So it's a lot of mind games that GR is bringing to the table. Yeah, so far, it's just going to tunnel in on X XMM. And look at that beautiful blink. And I'd like to highlight what you mentioned. Yes, these ciphers are being primed. So they're giving Vampy that false sense of security just to say, like, oh, I have enough time. There's four ciphers remaining. But if you listen closely, like, these ciphers are ready to pop. One is just about to do that. And they'll slowly be a domino effect if they're able to play their cards right. Yeah. Common collected GR still his. Even in the face of having one survivor chaired, one back to the manor. So they're still making some good progress. It's just that with three survivors remaining, you can only do so much. And at the same time, there's just less room for error at wow. this point in time. Wow. Wow. Okay, Cizai using that football just to get to the priestess before uh, the, the half hit and great stuff, great rescue. XMM just had to take that hit to try to traverse a better area. But as you mentioned, the ciphers are popping one by one. So Vampy cannot, you know, just uh, sleep on the wheel. He needs to be able to keep pushing. And he notices that there's a cipher at the entrance gate there that's about to pop. Now zoning in on Cizai. Yeah. And in all fairness, Kong is really starting to pick up the pace for the team. Two ciphers which are ready for the popping. So uh, Van P, definitely Uno and ideally keep up the pace here. Healing is coming on very nicely at 58% for XMM. It's only a matter of time though. There's only so much that Zai can do. Yeah, without, time and, oh. yeah, without a football, that was, yeah, he had, didn't have that much resources. And I love the proactivity of Vampy, allowing the Priestess to just use up her self-heal, focusing on this forward just to keep the survivors in check and keep them guessing on what's going to happen next. But, Articuno, as you mentioned, there's one Cypher remaining. There is just one, and timing is going to be everything at this point in time. Luckily, Zai is very fresh on this chair, so the possibility of working with the th full three numbers um, towards the last pop is still very much feasible here for them, so long as they play their cards right xmm however is not necessarily in the best position to go for Ooh. that rescue and actually gets a hit yeah wildling tried to just get the attention there couldn't go for that save just yet still on that bore so He's gonna have to ride that till the end. You see that XMM is pushing for that Cypher. It's like 80% Articuno. The timing needs to be right here. Oh, look at that excellent push away, but pushing him closer to XMM to pry and save the forward. XMM has to run and retreat away from that Cypher. Yes, and looks like that will be the fall of XMM, but oh. Van P, wow. Okay, using Abnormal to prolong the game, and just like that, the tide is slowly turning in favor of Vampy. That is pretty darn good. And with Abnormal coming into play for AL's Hunter, this just makes it monumentally harder for GR. We were already in a position where we were almost convinced they almost have it with that last pop but that abnormal coming into play just made things more difficult times a hundred yeah for... for sure because again the late game was about to happen the end game the the gate war was supposed to push through and now uh just prolonging that with two uh of Two survivors that are not really known as decoders. They have to start from 50%. It just prolongs the the war of attrition here for Vampy. So far, so good. Can he be able to get a, four, uh, a 4K? It's actually in the mids, I think. Yeah, and I might be a bit bold saying this, but AL's Vampy, very impressive. Could still very much push for the feasibility of getting all four survivors out of this game. It's... It's just a huge curveball from that point of abnormal coming into play for GR. Like, everyone was convinced that this was about to lead towards some big numbers for GR at the gate, but no, that's not the case. Van P just canceling out a lot of possibility for GR, and the pressure is on GR right now. Vampy is doing a great job patrolling around the area, just making sure that he's patrolling these ciphers. None of them are popping, but it does give room for uh, GR to get some items. You see that the forward is healing up, and now the Kong has the attention of Vampy still on that board, so can't eat a lot of those hips. Already full presence, and mind you, the abnormal already, uh, the cooldown time is done, so he, she, uh, Vampy can actually keep hammering at that cipher for them to really lose this war of attrition. Indeed, and oh my gosh, this is crazy. GR, in all fairness, 
Luckily, they were able to recuperate, um, regroup, even in the midst of just two members remaining. It's not gonna lie, Punch. It's gonna be very hard. Zai, it's a trying big to work task. Out. Yeah, you see that um, the forward is trying to pop the cipher at least above in in the hospital, a place that the survivors find safe haven in. But you know, Vampy with the wherewithal just to try to counter this. Still not sleeping on the wheel here. Knows that GR is one of the most formidable survivor teams out there and very consistent. Now locks his sights on Seizai. Yes, this is difficult. I think, if anything, it's going to be a game of patience and mental fortitude that we're looking at here. Patience for GR to try to work with the two survivors they have left into this game. Working around that as normal. And for Van P, the patience game of just making sure to keep these ciphers in check I mean, it's it's not as tough considering that there are only two survivors remaining. So it's like the scales at a very unstable situation right now for both teams, for both sides. Yeah, that's true. But GR being the formidable team they am, they they are. They're definitely trying to gain the attention just to try to pull Vampy away and lure lure an opening for them to push for that cipher. But then again, this is why the sculptor is one of the best hunters in this meta today because of that chisel. She can definitely harass around the map and still have amazing chase because of the sculpt uh, the the statues that she presents and now we see a propped up uh i think the crows yeah crows are being a factor for kong and he is not on his board so this is definitely a big opening for vampy if he can down this wildling yeah and oh goodness the the game continues like look at gr still at a fourth each of damage and yeah. um it's been pretty steady uh Back and forth, no, it's... tug of war. Look at this. It's back and forth. Inside the hospital, outside the hospital. But look at that. Vampy able to get a hit into Kong. Kong needs to find his way to get back into his uh, his wildling pal over there. But also eat that much hits. But look at that. Seizai trying to push, trying to tempt fate here. But Vampy again chasing out the forward. Will he go for the full commit to this forward? Yeah, these survivors trying to do what they can. Ideal scenario to try to lure Vampy away from these ciphers. And of course, you know, this is what makes it tricky. Vampy has easy access to keeping those ciphers in check. So like you you said it best, Clutch, it's just this continuing struggle of power and a tug of war between AL and GR. And not gonna lie, it's uh it's an interesting sight to behold. It might be a repetition that we're seeing from both sides, but that's what makes it all the more intense. Who is gonna be the first to break that cycle? You know, it's just who's going to blink first, right? Who's going to commit the first mistake? Because so far, they're playing it very conservatively. Vampy darting back and forth, monitoring the ciphers outside the hospital while still defending this cipher that the forward is pushing. But also, mind you, he, he has one abnormal still on deck. So if he doesn't feel too comfy with this cipher, progress! And just like that, whittles away everything for that the forward was working on. So really big uh, hill to climb for GR. That hill actually turned into a mountain, Artiguna. It did. It really did, Watch And, ah, uh, things are just going to be very tricky. And, okay, um, check out Cypherpunk, by the way. Just, uh, you know, that's this thing. It's like just smidgets that they have to pull off. And this is turning out to be a, like a long stretch of a game, Watch. And I'm not going to lie, I don't mind it, actually. I really don't. Okay, yeah, I don't think anybody does because, again, it's just back and forth. We want to find the best of the best. Who plays at their topmost conditions when it's 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 already down to the wire between these two? Already half health are both the survivors on GR's side. Can Vampy do the unthinkable and get the 4K amongst this uh, just amazing survivors? You do see the forward uh, using up the last of that syringe. Kong jumping back on the the wildling. I think this is one of the most the one of the longest matches that we'll witness here in Call of the Abyss. It, it really does look to be the case because um, at this point, Van P's, the most ideal you would want is to, well, Kong already has uh, halfway, so that's one thing. At least by taking down one, it helps relieve a lot of the pressure. But then again, there's also the factor where you have to consider which survivors still have a self-heal to work. Because it's not going to be an easy time of just bring someone to the rocket chair. Van P, of course, is in the mindset where he wants to go for all four out of the manor. Oh yeah, for sure. If he, he can set that pace since we did start at a 2-2, it could definitely happen. But Seizai gets caught in the mix, 
drops down to the first floor. Oh, luckily for him, the, the hit wasn't on the, in the way, but he is chasing. Already used the elbow pads, and it is the forward that will be falling down first between the two survivors. Yes. Now, it's all a matter of trying to scout out where Kong is. And of course, Vampy very well aware of positioning for Kong here. But looks like Vampy's first instinct will be to try to close out the distance a bit. Probably bring somewhere... Oh, that's going to be the drop. Yeah, I, yeah, like you said, close out that distance just to make sure that he's monitoring the cipher here. And I believe he's going to use abnormal once again. Oh my goodness, the pressure is a sur it's insurmountable from the side of gr with this very calculated and very smothering play style of vampy it's crazy if you think about it um meanwhile yeah sights on kong right now towards the top vampy of course gonna be very well aware of what is going on gonna make that transition towards the second floor to keep kong in check now Vampy is trying to weigh in did Kong already transition? Just trying to hear yeah, things out. Yeah. Looks like we'll just double check in case. Yeah, he spot. He tries to see Kong if anybody is pu pushing that cipher in the second floor. He does see that the forward did get back up, and now again you said that he has to worry about the cell peels. If he downs the forward again, that's a good done deal for him until they're able to pop that last cipher. Kong gets back on his horse just so that he can eat more of those hits. Will Vampy choose to commit? Because we see that Kong, uh, the forward, is trying to dig for something for an item to to be able to use in this game. Exactly, and. Oh gosh, the patience is real for Van P. Um, this very, at this point in time, it's just Van P not even really needing to be super proactive. It really comes down to the survivors to an extent revealing themselves, of course. Because yeah. it's them that's kind of in the pressure cooker right now, more so than VIP, where all Van P has to do is pretty much wait for activity to happen from either one of them. And it looks like yeah. the heal will come up from the side by yeah, that's the thing. If Vampy does sleep on the wheel just a little bit, stuff like that could happen where the forward is able to heal. So you can't sleep on a formidable team like GR. Vampy is aware of that and still monitoring around. Does not want to give an inch to GR because he knows they'll take a mile and this could be the opportunity for him to down this wildling. And he does. Oh my gosh. And there you have it. That's going to be... Van P keeping things in control. That's going to be a huge breather, by the way. Kong isn't going to be a problem. So it's going to be all coming down to taking down the final member of GR, who is trying to sneak his way through, by the way. Van P, of course, trying to read the situation, figure out where the survivor is. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, so the, what something to note also is that the Wildling did have that self-heal. So it's really a war of attrition here where Vampy is making sure that he's secure. He doesn't want to even give them the luxury of that dungeon. Doesn't want to make sure to chair someone so that dungeon pops up. Wants to make sure he whittles down everything and wants to make sure he does this right. Because he knows that uh, this round is very important to set the pace and gets a quick hit there on the side of uh, the forward. This is crazy, Potch. GR in a bit of a struggle. There are no more second lives. No more chances for both Kong and Tizai. One drop. That's one. No more healing up. Unless a fellow survivor can up them, but I mean, chances are with only two survivors remaining, that's a tall order. Grande, oh. Venti, however you want it. And another just abnormal, just to, yeah, just to make sure that none of these objectives or none of these ciphers get popped in that one, just that one, even though it's just one, the late game is still denied all courtesy of Vampy. Excellent stuff here, just monitoring, still being very calculated, not making sure, making sure that he doesn't like leave any a corner of this uh, map untouched because he wants to make sure that he downs both these survivors. And he sees uh, sees I in his radar, a fully a fully healed up forward, by the way. Yes, at least that's uh, a little bit of a small consolation to GR right now. But let's be honest, like that's just. Uh... Counting what blessings you do have in this game, there Ooh. is still the huge problem of GR not really having a clear solution on how to get these ciphers up. 
But the thing is, you know, the more he uses Abnormal, the less and less it gets. So they're really True. trying to um, try to push as much as they can and survive and really split the attention of Vampy. You saw that the Wildling is so good at late game, especially when he gets on that four. Uh, he could just eat a lot of those hits and a lot of uh, time would be bought for Kong to pop that Cypher. But Vampy realizing that once he's on that boar, make sure he switches target. Uh, the boar is is uh, on cooldown now. Uh, Porky is on cooldown. So now Vampy trying to set his sights still. Uh, monitoring around Birdcage here. The entrance of the hospital does see Kong in the distance. Puts a chisel there. Could this be it? That is the last life of Kong. Can Seizai try to seize the opportunity and try to up his teammate or wait for him to bleed out for him to get to the dungeon? Mm, tricky, tricky. Look at this, though. Trying to salvage what can maybe find some tools that will help us cost okay uh one to work with dots um gonna, it's gonna help a bit in terms of keeping himself up but i mean uh, still not the um not the most ideal yeah oh wow well, uses the wand right there just to buy him a little more time Jukes back into this structure of ruins here. Seizai again running with uh, still a little bit of ammunition with him. Uses the wand once again to try to... Um, well, he does have that wand left, but then uh, one half hit, one fourth hit would actually down him. Can he survive long enough? No! It is going to be a 4k for AL. Four down, Poch. And Mercenary and forward fan. Very, very interesting. So we can expect the mechanic to just bring the decoding to the crown. Maybe we're gonna see a seer since he is in the meta too, but not necessarily. We saw it earlier, even if the meta characters are not banned, we might expect different constellations. As I'm just saying it, we can see it. We have the Wildling, the Coordinator and the Explorer in addition to the mechanic very 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 excited to see that the wildling is being utilized that often i have to be very honest i did not expect that wildling seems to be the new meta so now we are just waiting yep. for the hunter ban the hunter ban will again i am predicting it will be a dream witch um, doesn't really, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter uh, what the <laughs> map is. You just want to ban that dream much against uh, GR. So let's see what the ban will be and then let's mm -hmm. see what PPX will come up with the Hunter. Well, I have some interesting news for you. See, I just got news that um, might not be reflecting on the screen, but the ban was indeed a dream witch. So that will force uh, PPX to bring something different the table and okay it is the guard i was expecting a guard to be honest i was expecting a guard ppx very well known for his guard after his three much mm -hmm. here he comes let's go i'm ready i'm ready i am just as ready as you are grizzly looking for the right. blocking still hovering it over so really thinking about this pick not going the full commit to it just yet Hmm. I have Look to be that. very honest, I have been playing a little bit of God 26 myself. Oh yeah? How'd that go, my friend? And <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm definitely taking notes right here because <laughs> okay. I am not the best, not the best God 26, but God 26 is definitely dangerous. Um, allows you to really connect some bombs and put pressure on the survivors. We saw it with the sculptor before, in the match before, where the sculptures just this little bit of damage that you can deal can change the entire match with the sculptures uh statues and it comes right here never hitting the break and here it goes ppx coming in goes immediately into the check direction all of these players know exactly where to go since they know the map layout they know the spawn points and just going into the direction of the check gives PPX two targets, decide to go for Roly, which is the coordinator in this uh, lineup. Let's see what he can do. We also, oh, that was a very, very early flare gun shot, but was still able to bring in the bomb pit. Fantastic job from PPX right here. Fantastic job from Roly as well. Let's see how this plays out. Indeed, let us see. So. This is quite the 
situation that AL has to deal with. A lot of members in the vicinity, two of which take a hit, so gonna be up to Rowley to try to make the most of that last uh, bit of life. Can't suffer another bomb, or else that's gonna be one down Corden. That was a fantastic chop right there. Good chop with the remote bomb, bringing down Rowley immediately. Just not wasting any time at all to bring down the survivors. Fantastic job at the shack where he just put down all these bombs around the the pallet and still went through the pallet to give an additional hit to the coordinator. Fantastic job. You can now see Ato is coming in, who was already taking one damage with the bomb, but is on the board right here, so that might allow him to take two more hits. Oh, there comes the first. Now it's gonna be very dangerous. Now it's gonna be very dangerous to actually go in for a rescue. Gotta be careful, but as well, you want to get that rescue either before halfway or just trying to buy more time for the team. Again, we have the mechanic, as we can see in the bottom left, just bringing the coding speed to the ground. You can now see that Raoli is through the halfway mark and Wildling is just keeping PPX. A little bit distracted. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But I think at this point in time, it's safe to say that AL will be losing out on one survivor. Not to mention, I would say Cypher Progress is decent. Um, yes. Made the most of what they can because Rowley was taken out down quite early. So that proved to be a bit of a problem for AL as this game went along. If anything, they just settled on maximizing the time Rowley had on that chair to work on what Cyphers they can. Still a bit of a way to go, but it's without a doubt, PPX, he is not having any of it. Mm, very, very nice with the bomb and reaching through the pallet right here and hitting the Wildling for the first time, which is actually the second time bringing him down because he had two bombs. Um, great job, as you already said, on the survivor side. Look at the Cypher Machine progress. They were letting the coordinator on the chair. Wildling was there just to keep the Guard 26 on the chair to allow the rest of the team to decode the Cypher Machines. And you can see it right now. The Cypher Machine will be popped quite soon. And the fifth Cypher Machine is at halfway. So that is extremely good for AL again. Want to remind everyone, this is a game in which both teams fight for the for for one point for the point for this entire round, and AL can get this point for this entire round by just getting out one survivor, and they know it. They already brought down four cipher machines. Look at the progress. Fantastic job. Really is. It really, really is. Oh. Using the same strategy we saw earlier on the Sculptor match, where we had um, AL on the Hunter side, just using Abnormal to bring down the speed and to buy more time as Hunter. Yes, and at this point in time, Grizzly, it's very crucial that they try to maximize while they still have three survivors. Otherwise, we might have a repeat of earlier where in... Ooh. That's going to be the least going down. But as I was saying, they might have a repeat earlier where it's going to be a massive tug of war between Hunter and Survivor. And it seems like that's going to be exactly the case. Going to place some bombs right here. And we can see going back to Doliso to either bring Atto down or to actually just secure the Survivor on the chair and to buy a little bit more time and to put more pressure on the Survivor side. Actually bringing the explorer closer to the cypher machine extremely good to put more pressure on that one cypher machine he knows that the survivors want to decode and it is halfway done but can he prevent them to prime this cypher machine before the rescue hmm that is a bit tricky i mean they did get it towards the half mark once again but look at this setup it's just not going to make it easy whatsoever to try to get the Lisu. Luckily though for Ale, the Lisu is still very fresh on this rocketer, so they have a lot of time to work. But you know, they don't want to put themselves to the point where they have to maximize it to a TN. Look at this, just massive defense coming in from PPX here. So 
I think the best thing that AL can do right now, Cat is already on the case though, already trying to work on the Cypher in the distance. But of course, PPX is going to want to try to keep that in check. But at least the time is ticking, that Survivor is going to expire. So AL needs to go for the hope and a prayer that they got enough progress on that Cypher. Because PPX, as soon as he makes his way there, Abnormal is going to kick in, it's going to bring them nearly back to square one. That's gonna be extremely difficult now for the survivors. Extremely good job from PPX putting pressure on, on the remaining survivors. Again, we have Otto who can only take one more hit before going down. We have Head right here going down. The question is, what are the survivors trying to do? And exactly that question is PPX asking himself. And of course, they want to go for that one Cypher machine that is almost done, or at least almost at 75% but 75% that still means a long long way to go to actually pop that cypher machine and we have abnormal coming in really slowing down the progress really putting pressure on the survivors and for now as you already said it seems like history is repeating itself we have the match or well, at least it feels like the match we had before with the Sculptor, where it just goes forth and back and forth and back and back and forth between the two survivors until PPX finally got all of them down and they can't actually get up again. I think history is repeating itself. Let's see. It really looks like that's the case. And oh my gosh, these bombs. You know what's kind of crazier here, Grizzly, is the fact that with PPX on this Yard 26, and not to mention, he's been very quick, by the way. He has been very quick on his feet. Um, Cat is already on the way towards the healing. Now PPX just trying to veer towards Atto here. So, like I said, it's similar to earlier. This time around, PPX should be manageable as long as he keeps his it's patient, keeps the mental fortitude up. Just needs to try to exhaust these hunters all the way down and all should be well should be well. There comes the first hit on the board, means only one more hit is needed. Can he connect? Um, yeah he did, I think. I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we can see he's really trying to get him off the board with the bombs. Uh, will it lead to fruition for him though? Taking a bit of a while, but then again that is understandable. Cat in the midst of things already near getting up again so that shouldn't be that should be a bit of room to breathe for al take note of the progress on this one cypher by more than 50 percent and Otto is doing a great job uh, keeping ppx preoccupied that might be it i think you forgot that cat already got up right ah you're yeah Actually. yeah i think cat already got up earlier um that's why Otto is trying to buy more and more time waiting for had to bleed out and hopefully get the dungeon but at this point in time mm -hmm. it's not gonna happen fantastic job as i already said before 